Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The text for our sermon today comes to us from the Holy Gospel of St. Matthew in the fifth chapter. Jesus said, You are the salt of the earth, and you are the light of the world. What he didn't say was, You should be the salt of the earth, or you should be the light of the world. He said, You are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. But too often we take these, these words of Christ as imperatives, as commands for how you should be, how you should act. We take them as a kind of, of measuring stick for our holiness. And inevitably we start beating ourselves up because we aren't salty enough. We don't shine like we ought to. See, the devil, the world, and our own sinful nature, they want us to believe that Christianity is nothing more than a religion of self-improvement, a religion of works. Now, we are tempted to believe that being salt and being light is about living such a perfect life that everyone else would want to be just like us. Or convincing other people that, that being a Christian is just, it's just really, really cool. And that they'll want to become Christians too. We're even tempted to see God's Word as, a, well, as the world's best self-help book. Have you ever heard the the saying that, that Bible, B-I-B-L-E, stands for basic instructions before leaving earth. Well, that sort of makes God's word into a, well, into kind of a sales pitch. A sales pitch that feeds into that first sin of Adam and Eve. That desire to be like God. You must become salt and light. At first it sounds fairly doable. It sounds like something we we could probably pull off. And what a boon if we did. But this is the very same problem that the Pharisees had. They twisted the law and the prophets into a kind of law that was doable. They twisted Holy Scripture so that it didn't point to the Messiah. It didn't point to Christ, but it pointed instead to themselves, to what they had done. Those doable good works as the way of salvation. And even if we try this approach for some time, reality sets in. That veneer of self-delusion wears out. We can't pull it off. No one, no one can pull it off. How many of you walk around with a forced smile on your face? A projection that has absolutely nothing to do with the, with the sadness, the heartache the pains that you bear in your soul? How many times have you been shaken in this world by tragedies, by unexpected events, by a diagnosis of cancer, by a sudden heart attack, a sudden and unexpected death of a child? As Holy Scripture says, all our righteous deeds are like polluted garments. And all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Or as we confess this morning, 
If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Having a good, hard, honest look at ourselves, we can see this to be true. The small catechism instructs us to consider our place in life according to the Ten Commandments. Are you a father, mother, son, daughter, husband, wife, or worker? Have you been disobedient, unfaithful, or lazy? Have you been hot-tempered, rude, or quarrelsome? Have you hurt someone by your words or deeds? Have you stolen, been negligent, wasted anything, or done any harm? And then the words of Christ today. For I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. It's all really pretty depressing. And despair sets in. You, you will never be salt and light. But if we took the second stanza of him 797, I'll paraphrase it lightly here. Trust not in your own powers. You are but mortal. Earth-born you are and soon decay. Vain are your own counsels at life's last portal when the dark grave engulfs its prey. Since mortals can no help afford, Place all your trust in Christ the Lord. Trust in Christ Jesus because he says you are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. You are these things, not because of what you do, not because of how hard you work. You are these things because he says you are. Just as in holy baptism where you did not earn your adoption as children of God, but it was the work of God's own hand that washed you clean, that clothed you with Christ, and declared, that said it is this way, you are my beloved child, with whom I am well pleased. So also you do not make yourself salt and light You are salt and light because God declares it so. He makes it so simply because He says it is. You are salt and light. Not by what you do, but because of Jesus in you. Salt and light are from Christ Jesus. And this is the Lord's promise Since you cannot be salt and light without him, and yet he says you are, he must therefore always be with you. For it is his righteousness and his righteousness alone that exceeds the scribes and the Pharisees. And it is his righteousness that he gives to you freely upon the cross. In your baptism, through the preached word, and through his holy sacrament of his body and his blood. Now through the power of the Holy Spirit, he works in you and through you so that you are salt and light wherever you go. You are salt and light in your families, as children of parents and as parents of children, as husbands and wives, as aunts and uncles, as brothers and sisters, as cousins, or whatever relation you may be to another. You are salt and light in your place of work. You are salt and light in your neighborhood and in your community. You are salt and light because his words today are not a command, but they are a description a description and a promise of who you truly are 
in Christ Jesus. And may the peace of God which passes all understanding guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.